Good morning, YouTube. I hope you had a wonderful week with your students. Today, I am just feeling so good. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that my AP class is really just relaxing and enjoying time being together. I saw the FRQs that came out. I'm sure you all thought that they were pretty reasonable. I didn't think they were too bad. Um, so I'm just kind of feeling like the stress just dissipate. I'm feeling really excited for the rest of the year. And today I'm gonna talk about one of my favorite things, organization and lab prep. Now, for somebody like me, I've taught three levels of chemistry over my 16 year career at this point. And one of the things that I would always struggle with was the ability to transition easily from lab to lab with students. So really what I wanna do today is talk about how I store some of my chemicals to make it so much easier and just give you some things that you might wanna think about, especially if you're a brand new teacher and you're like, oh, what should I do? What should I order? Let me show you some stuff that works for me. And then, you know, for anybody that's a veteran teacher, you may be looking to kind of improve your organizational skills too. So this video is really for anybody that's looking to improve anything that they're doing in the lab, especially when it comes to organization and being able to set up and break down more easily. So come along with me. I'm going to show you what I got and I'll tell you all about it because I'm actually prepping one of my favorite labs. We are doing a lab on reaction rate. And so we're going to be looking at factors that affect rate. So I have a bunch of things that I need to prep. classroom right now and this is typically where I will prep chemicals that I need for my lab and so I have a lot of stuff out already because obviously I was prepping for the lab that I'm doing on Monday so I thought I would show you some of the things that I use to make it so much easier from year to year be able to transition from lab to lab so the first thing that I'm going to suggest that you invest in are baskets and this probably comes down to the fact that I was a cart teacher for many years before I got my own classroom but baskets have made it so much easier for me to take things that I have and just keep them together and put them on the shelf so that I can just pull it out whenever I need it. So one of my favorite baskets is actually sitting right here and you'll see I already started prepping the lab and I have some of my reagents in here. This is a basket from Dollar Tree. So obviously as teachers, you know, we don't have a lot of money to spend on stuff. We shouldn't be spending our own money. Sometimes we have to to get our students what they need. But one of the things that I just love about Dollar Tree is they have some pretty nice stuff for really cheap. So this is about a dollar now. Um, I love it because obviously the colors are very fun. They have all different colors, but I've had these baskets for, I want to say probably close to four or five years. And I use them all the time from lab setups to equipment transport. You can't put like really heavy stuff in it. Like obviously I do have some dropper bottles in here, but you're not going to want to like fill the entire thing with dropper bottles because it is a little Little bit on the flimsier side but it's perfect for storing any of your solid reagent chemicals or even just having like a lab set up in the tray for your students to use a lot of times when i was a teacher on the cart i would have my lab cart in the back of me as i was kind of rolling down the hallway and on that cart i would have all these labs set up all these different lab setups for the students so they can just simply take their lab and get going on it one of the ways that I store the solid chemicals in my labs is by using these little specimen cups. Now, obviously you can't store all substances in here, but anything that is fairly non-toxic that isn't going to interact with the chemicals, I just store in these little vials. So it's just like you would go you know, to the doctor, you would get a specimen cup to urinate into. It's the same idea here. These are 60 milliliter specimen cups. They are sterile cups. They come just like this. Whenever I'm about to prep a lab, I simply just open the cup right it's got this nice little screw top and they're you know pretty inexpensive you can get them from you know Fisher or Flint Scientific depending on who your science supply is for your district but I absolutely love them and then on top of that one of the things that I do too is I include a little scoop in them so the next thing I'm going to recommend that you definitely have to stock your lab are these so this is a disposable, we've got a micro spatula on the one end, and then we have a larger scoopula on the other. So I absolutely love these. So for these chemicals, 
I just put them right inside here and you can see I've got my own little scoop there right for the kids to use dispense their own chemicals for this one I chose to use a larger one a larger scoop um, but what I love so much about it is the fact that they are plastic and so since they're plastic you can actually cut them so the one of the ways that you can do that is you put the scoop into the little cup here and then take your pair of scissors and you just simply kind of hold it there and then I kind of move it up a little bit so it will fit inside do a little choppy chop and then just put it right in there and put the top on and it fits perfectly and it's one of those things again just makes it super easy you don't have to go get a special scoopula for all the little chemicals that your students are using they come pre-ready and they're all set to go whenever you're ready you also may notice that a lot of my vials of chemicals are pre-labeled and that's really important especially like I said if you have a lot of little chemicals and stuff that you need now the thing that I use to label my stuff is masking tape but I purchased this masking tape organizer this is from Amazon I absolutely love it totally worth the price but you can use you know any masking tape but obviously I use this all the time um, I will post it down below so you know what I used but this is how I label all my chemicals all my reagent bottles everything using this masking tape dispenser I have it sitting right up on my bookshelf and then I use a sharpie I have a sharpie sitting right next to it so that I if I have to write a quick label I can do that so this has been an amazing purchase I use this all the time another thing that you're gonna to want to make sure that you have on hand for your lab are reagent bottles so I have a lot of reagent bottles of different sizes this is really for me to make any solutions that I need and then what I can do is I can take the solutions that are in those reagent bottles and add them to these little drops dropper bottles. So I always have extra dropper bottles on hand. I've got small ones usually for things that I'm adding drop wise, like for example, indicators, you know, with a titration. And then I've got the larger ones for things like maybe a precipitation reaction that you're doing on a smaller scale. These are perfect. And like I said, I, I do tend to label them using those labels that I got with the masking tape. Again, just makes it really easy and organized. The only thing that you do want to look out for is if you end up storing chemicals um, in these bottles, specifically acids, like hydrochloric acid for example you're going to want to make sure that you dump that out at the end of the school year because it will corrode the rubber and um, you know it, it'll make a big old mess inside of here so you won't be able to use them anymore so I would pour them out and then um, you can start over the next year to make your solutions I would say my last tip that has really helped me at least with the cleanup process is purchasing large trays that I can actually put my balances in. Now my students are first year chemistry students with the exception of the AP class, but my honor students, my CP students, they are first year chemistry students. They're not all that comfortable with the lab just yet. So a lot of times they do struggle to get the masses of things. Um, sometimes, you know, stuff ends up all over the place. And because they're still honing their lab skills, one of the things that I've purchased are two large trays to put underneath my balances. Now the purpose of these two trays is obviously to collect any solids that have fallen off of the balance. I also will typically, like when it comes time to clean up, kind of just wipe off the balance into the tray. Then I can just simply pick up the tray, bring it to the sink and rinse it down the drain with plenty of water. But these trays have made it so much easier and a lot safer for my students because now I don't have chemicals out all the time. I'm constantly being able to just simply pick up the tray, clean it and then put it back. I think that's it for me. I hope this video was helpful and gave you some ideas and things that you can think about as you prepare for next year. If you're a veteran teacher and you're watching this video and you have some awesome tips to help newer teachers prepare for their year, some time-saving strategies with lab prep, please leave a comment down below. I want to wish you a wonderful Teacher Appreciation Week. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be sure to check in with you guys.